Good afternoon, everyone. I'm glad you're here and you're still awake at 4.30. Today, we're going to introduce a different way of looking at youth, handsomeness, and beauty to be equal gender here. We have to first ask ourselves a very simple, fundamental question. Do we understand what youth is? And that may sound funny to you, but the real problem is that we don't. Look at the people around town that have had facelifts and brow lifts. They don't look like themselves. They don't look more youthful. They look a lot tighter, but they don't look youthful. So how do we get there? How do we understand what youth is? We start with their old photographs. How many plastic surgeons have ever asked for you to look at your old photographs and look at that photograph at, will it make you look fat? No, I'll make you slimmer. So wait a second, doc, you're gonna make my eyes look less heavy by adding fat, and you're gonna make me look slimmer by adding fat? Yes. Look at this mother-daughter pairing. What is the difference in aging that goes on right now? What you see is that the face of the child, the, the daughter, has a heart-shaped face, and it gets heavier as you get older by being inverted. The triangle flips. So my goal is to re-sculpt and rebalance that face so that the upper face has the beauty and the fullness that it did in youth. I will challenge you, don't believe any of my before and afters today. Don't believe any of the things I'm talking to you about today. Believe your own. And I've brought live patients for you to see at the end of this whole thing. This is meant to be a little bit funny, but it's also serious. When we're young, we're great and full. We become a raisin over time. So why should we cut, pull, lift, and stretch that raisin until it becomes a pea? Because a pea doesn't look like a grape. A grape looks like a grape. So we have to understand, do you want to look the same or do you want to look different? I'm having you rethink everything you know from the beginning. Here's the other thing. I love women, but women have a different way of looking at the world than men do. What is that? Doctor, don't you see this little line? It's this. Because when you put makeup on, you're very close. So every minor little flaw becomes a travesty. So what I want you to think today is volume shape so that when you walk in front of me five to 20 feet away, you look incredible. That's the impact I want to deliver for you, not two inches. Two inches doesn't matter. If you're the only person in the world that can see the result and someone still walks up to you and says, are you still tired? I've done nothing for you. I've wasted your money. I'm not here to do that today. Do you want a big cut? Most of you don't want a facelift. In the last five years, facelifts have gone down tremendously. Do I do facelifts? Absolutely. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. How about I don't make a cut? How about I don't use any sutures, knives, bandages, anything that you even know about traditional surgery? Throw it out the window right now and forget it all. I want you to think differently today. Yes, I like apples. I'm going to expropriate a little bit of their term. The most important thing are your eyes. If the eyes look tired, I've done nothing for you. Let's talk about, I'm a little Italian today. Look at the eyes. The eyes are where the heart is. If you look at these eyes here, if you can believe this lady on the left has already had a facelift, does she look rested on the left? She doesn't. Now take a look at her on the right. This is just without a single cut. The brow is filled with fat, the lower eyelid, the cheek. Does she look fatter? Or does she just look more rested? Don't believe my photos, believe yours. Go back and look at your photos when you're 30, 32, 35. When they thought they looked the best, it usually is not in the mid-20s, you'll be surprised. Because a lot of times it's baby fat, they look too round. So what most women like is around the early 30s, that's the 80% rule. I'm usually wrong 20% of the time, but I just give you a general philosophy here. Look at this lady on the left. She's already had a brow lift and eyelid surgery. Does she look rested? At 40, she's already had in her early 30s. And guess what? She was gonna go back to her physician to get another brow lift. But I'm gonna challenge you one thing. I know that, doesn't it? You would probably intuitively take skin and fat and lift the brows up yourself. But it's not heavy enough. Look at how much heavier I made the brow in order to make it look less heavy. Crazy, right? I'm not crazy, just a little bit. But crazy enough to tell you that everyone else is crazy. Look at the volume, the frame around the eye. That's young. And look at her in her early 20s. I'm the only one that ever bothered to ask her to look at her early 20s, or uh, mid 20s, excuse me. It's a full eye. Her crease was never as high as done before. Look at that eye there. Would you cut skin? Would you lift the brows? If you look carefully, I brought her brows down. I framed the crease lower. It's fuller. That's what's so beautiful about this. It's volume. It's understanding not to make someone fat, but the artistry behind how to do this. You say, well, I've seen fat graph results. They don't look like yours. You're right. This is art. This is my passion, this is my art. So I deliver a different product. 
If you take a look at this lady, do you want to cut skin? Yes, you do, don't you? That's okay, I do. Intuitively, I want to cut skin, but I'm not going to do it because it's actually deflation. It needs to be filled. I filled it, I gave her volume because volume is what she had. If you start with her old photos, you'll begin to understand this is predicated on reality. Here's a young, young lady of 41. She has an empty eye, why? Is it aging? It looks aged. No, it's because she had a brow lift and traditional eyelid surgery that took the frame away. I put it back in. So now when I tell you I'm gonna bring your brows down, you won't think I'm crazy. I'm not crazy, what's crazy? I'm up. Do you like this? No, I don't. If you do, you're in the wrong room. We're gonna talk about volume shape today. Understanding the fundamental aspect of how to design a face that looks gorgeous. So forget the two inch mirror, pull yourself back five feet. All my photographs are taken rigorously, consistently with the same lighting, same room, same distance, same camera, same settings with no ambient light. And I have a seven minute video on my website declaring how rigorous my, my photography is. But if you think about why I don't use a flash, how do you and I see each other in 99% of our existence with just overhead lights? So what I do is I replicate that. This is not a single spotlight coming down, they're uniform embankments of light but it's understanding the volume that is shown by just overhead lights. Does this lady look fatter after fat grafting or does she look thinner? She looks thinner. I didn't do a facelift. I didn't do liposuction. I gave her volume in the right places because what I've done is taken a wide face and slim it. And sometimes I take a thin face and in it. This is a lady on the left who's already at 49, had a brow lift, upper, lower eyelid and facelift. Does she look rested? But I've widened her face here. Is that okay in this case? To me it is because what I've done is designed a beautiful face that looks 35. Her husband thinks she looks 35. She's 49. So this is rethinking everything you know. Sometimes you narrow, sometimes you widen. That's the love of artistry you should exercise. Here's a 55 year old lady. Don't you want to take skin? Don't you want to take a bag out? It's volume. It's bone. Look carefully. Look at it again. Look at it from different eyes. You'll see that that's volume. Does she look heavier afterwards or lighter? She looks lighter because I sculpted her appropriately. So you heard before I alluded to it, I don't want to make you look different. In fact, I'm going to show you in a moment how I take people that already look too different and I don't know what the verb is, undifferent them, okay? Let's look at old photographs. Here's a lady in her mid-50s who's already had an extended brow. Does she look rested on the left? No. She had a mini facelift I did and then just volume in all the right places and now she's rested. You say, well, doc, how about the lines? Didn't they get changed? What happened to the, how about the lines? Forget the lines. I'm going to challenge your thinking. The lines are useless. I want to have you rethink it. It will not be clear at that point for another five to ten minutes. But I'm going to blow everything you away. Everything you know I'm going to take and throw in the trash. Do the lines matter? No, it's volume. If you look at her, do the brows look heavy? Yeah, they do. They need more. Because there's convexity that's youthful. That's the trick. Understand the shape of that face is what's beautiful. And you know what's powerful about this photograph? She is on Accutane which is if you ask any plastic surgeon that has any brains, it will not touch a patient on Accutane. But this is incisionless. I can't make a cut, I can't do skin. But she looks younger. That's a frontal view. How about the work on the left? Do you like the work here? Do you think that left looks nice or do you think my correction looks better? That's volume. It's understanding that I can shape a 59 year old face and make it look 35. In every single case, no. But here's a good example of matching an old photograph. Did the other plastic surgeon begin with the old photograph or even ask for them? Ask yourself that one question. 51 year old lady, that brow's high or low? It's low, let's make it lower. I made it lower, it's over the eye. But how, why did I do that? How about looking at her at 35? That 35 year old eye has a very full low eye. So let's understand what makes someone young. How about taking people that already look fake and unfaking them? How about people that look too much different and trying to erase that damage? Let's start with this lady. That This story went national on Fox on every affiliate of the United States. I want you to see the before. That's the after by another surgeon. That is a brow lift, upper, lower eyelid, cheek implant. Is that rested to you? Is that natural? Is that young? How about taking the implants out, doing a little silicone to sculpt the lips, and then the rest of it's fat? Is that youthful? Is that better? It's not perfect. I can't take everything away that the other surgeon gave but I can try. I can make a different impact on her. 73 year old, so she looks pretty good, left with scars from phenol and also over lifted brows. But adding volume creates a softness, creates a femininity 
and I sculpt differently from men versus women. I have a different perspective, and I want you to understand that perspective. How about the eyes here, overcut? Do you like that look? Is that youthful to you? How about adding it back? How about doing the exact opposite of everything you've been programmed to think about? Here's a lady that came to me from California. Her lower eye pulled down from lower eyelid surgery. I, f I filled it, and you know what's interesting about this? She came to me a year out and says, Doctor, I'm not gonna wear any makeup. I really wanna see the difference. She has no makeup. My mom, who I did a few, about three weeks ago, you can see her come up here in a second, she said, I don't have to wear makeup anymore because there's so much light that hits a face that's youthful. And look at her eyelid position, her dry eye has been gone. Does that happen every time? No. But that's pretty good if I can subtract not only her previous surgery, but the functional deficit she was left with. And it, this is what's interesting. I didn't touch her brows. Air cases, her brows too heavy. Now I balanced it by pushing the lower face forward. That's the artistry. That's what makes it different. That's a book I wrote, came out last year, sold tremendously in academic meetings. This is for surgeons. Don't go out and buy a $250 book because it's, it's a waste of your money. This is for surgeons to understand this revolution. Do we have to do anything with sedation? What, can I just come in your office for five minutes and make me look better? All right. There it is. Have you seen a result looking like that? That's Restylane. Hmm. You know what I didn't fill? Her lines. So what do you get filled every three months? Your lines? On the left, she already had her lines filled. And if you can believe it, does that look rested to you on the left with the lines? Guess what I didn't fill for her? Her lines. I filled her volume. This is painless, by the way. And I know you don't believe me. And my staff can tell you it's painless, but of course you can't believe them, but it's painless. It takes me less than 10 minutes to do this. And it gives you the semblance of fat. It gives you a preview of what I can do permanently for you. The lines look deeper. Is that okay if you look this good at 49? Understanding volume is the trick. Understanding shape and design work. That's everything here. Meet my staff. I'm going to show you my staff with their before and afters. Some of them don't want me to show them, but, and if, if I have them, here's Constance. Constance, come on up here, so just say hi. You don't have to say up here. Constance, my patient care coordinator. There we go. Uh, Marcy's really left earlier, but she may be here tomorrow if you want to say hi to her. Beth is not, uh, I don't know if Beth is coming tomorrow or so, but that's another one of my staff members. Darla, where are you? Here's Darla. She's a younger lady in her mid-30s, and you can see that. Just a little volume shaping even goes well for someone younger. Diane, who's not here, she's my nurse administrator. And that's photograph, if you can believe it, was taken three years ago, the four. The recent one was just taken this year. And then my mom, you want to say hi, mom? <laughs> my mom's next birthday will be 68 in October. She's three weeks out. It is a little puffy. It's not quite there yet, but not bad. Meet my patients. Here are my lovely patients. Drew, want to come on up here? Now, the, Drew, I, I want to say that she was crying a little bit, so there's a little bit puffy here. I did not do that, but she looks wonderful. Do you want to say a few words? Um, oh, Probably yeah. Let me get this here. Everybody, um, I went to Dr. Lamb. Um, if you look at my before picture, I'm 47, and I felt like 67. I just uh, didn't feel good about myself. Um, actually, uh, Dr. Lamb talked me into not doing a brow lift. I begged him to, and he didn't, and I'm really happy he didn't. Um, I do some modeling work for a girlfriend of mine, and uh, looking at my pictures the other day, someone that was hiring some people, she, they said, well, we want her, we want someone about 25. I was airbrushed a little, but still, <laughs> feel good about it. But I just, he's just great, and I really trust him, and he's really made a difference in my life. Thank you, Drew. Eleanor. Eleanor has asked me not for her not to say anything, so we're going to do a little ventriloquism. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> okay. Hi, everybody. Um, the left side is my before, and actually, in that before picture, I'm actually rested because I had been on vacation for three months. So if you can imagine, before that three-month vacation, I was very, very sallow under my eyes and sunken in. And thank God I found Dr. Lamb. And the picture on the right is from yesterday. And he's made a huge difference. It's been six weeks for me now. And uh, I couldn't be happier. Thanks so much. Vicki, come on down. 
You're the next contestant. Don't overbid here. Okay. Well, um, I'm probably, I was thinking a triple threat with hair transplantation, fat transplantation, Botox, and then I said, oh no, it's four, because I had fat transplantation in my hands. Because I thought, well, why make the face look young and the hands not? So I'm 56 and I'm...